For some analysis, let me turn to Sanam Naroghi Anderlini. She's founder and executive director of International Civil Society Action Network and joins us from here in Washington. Sanam, this yet again, another in a series of discriminatory measures against women and girls. We saw it in schools, we saw it in workforce, uh, public parks, really most areas of public life in Afghanistan. So what happens now? What does this mean for millions of Afghans, men, women, and children who desperately need humanitarian aid? Thank you, Asijan. Um, this, is, this is horrific. Um, it's yet again the Taliban is uh, playing and using Afghan women, putting pressure on Afghan women as a way, as a negotiating tactic to get its way with the international community. And the challenge that we have is that um, because of the dire need, of course, the UN is doing whatever it can to try and find a pathway out of this. But if the UN bends and says that they will uh, abide by the Taliban's decree that, that their Afghan, female Afghan staff cannot work uh, for the UN, um, the implications of this, both in Afghanistan, but also internationally, are profound because other countries, other movements, other extremist entities can look at this and say, you know, we put enough pressure and the UN will not only bend to our will, but will continue to provide the services. And, and the challenge here is that if you're the Taliban and you want to be the leader of this country, um, and you want to be part of the international community, you want our money, your tax dollars, my tax dollars, etc., then you have to abide by the rules and principles that exist. The UN must be able to hire national Afghan women alongside national Afghan men in its staff, as it does international men and, men and women. It's as simple as that. And the Islamic countries and China, that has now emerged as a big you know, ro actor in the mediation space, need to step up and stand by these principles. Let me tell you what the UN Secretary General Special Representative for Afghanistan had to say. Her name is Rosa Atanbaeva. She says, in the history of the United Nations, no other regime has ever tried to ban women from working for the organization. Just because they are women, this decision represents an assault against women. The fundamental principles of UN and international law. Otambayeva goes on to say she's actually in discussions with the Taliban at the highest level to seek an immediate reversal of that order. Sana, my question to you is, is this going to make a difference? Up until this point, the Taliban have not reversed any of the decisions they've made when it comes to women. Well, up, to, up until this point, um, the international community and the UN has bent over backwards to do whatever it can because it cares about the Afghan population and, and the human, dire humanitarian situation that's on the ground. We have now reached a point where the UN cannot take, a, you know, cannot bend further. It cannot allow this to happen, as I said, because it's going to be bad for Af Afghanistan. It's going to be bad for. It's going to destroy the international, um, uh, the, the, the entire, the essence of the UN. This is actually going to destroy the UN. Basically, and that—that's what—that's what's at stake here. So I, th I think I, I think the the UN representative is absolutely right in taking a hard stance. She needs the entire world behind her. She absolutely needs. And you all know, of, you know, Sana, of, it of, seems like neither engagement nor isolation are working here. So what is the solution? The the solution, I think, is. It's a couple of things. I think we need a political solution. And this is, you know, in, in, in my work, when I ask whether it's governments, Western governments or, or regional governments, and we say, well, what's your strategy for engaging, you know, for Afghanistan? What's the political solution? Everybody has shied away from that. So there needs to be a political solution. That's that's important because the, the humanitarian and development and, and other forms of, of assistance flow from that ultimately. But that political solution has to rest on fundamental basic principles of human rights and universal human rights. And, and I think that the challenge that we have right now is that um, these principles have been uh, flouted by many across the world. Uh, the Western world, which, which often takes, the, takes it as if it's their values and as if it doesn't matter to, to others in the world, um, is actually tarnished in, in its role. It's, it's withdrawn from the Afghan space a, a, a great deal. But other countries, there are you know, members of the Organization of Islamic States, um, other emerging uh, power um, holders in, in the international system 
need to take a stand and not allow this to happen. If it happens in Afghanistan, it's going to happen. You know, already we're seeing laws changing in Indonesia and elsewhere in terms of regressive um, uh, measures coming in, and it is targeting women. You can't have 50% of the population um, locked up at home. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Sanam Narori Anderlini, thank you.